Hi, Gail Hogue here with Gregory. It's November 10th, 2016, and it just so happens it is our 31st anniversary. So we're entering our 32nd year together. It's been an amazing, amazing ride. And uh, just want to share with you that this love has been something that has catalyzed so much for both of us. So much personal growth, so many gifts that come in to the world, and just get, keeps getting better. <laughs> it just keeps getting better all the time. So this is also a time of extraordinary shift. Two days ago, we experienced the election, the presidential election in the United States, and it has brought up a tremendous amount of both turmoil and confusion, questions, and also activation. I really recognize that this is a divine time that when we have the perspective of what we're truly here for, it is our opportunity to come forward, to be fully active in who we are, to ground that together in a new sense of unity. And it's really quite challenging and quite exquisite at the same time. So we're going to chat a little bit with you about some of our thoughts and insights about what has just taken place. Wow, a lot. And I think for me, my bubble was really burst. I was hiding out, not aware that the tremendous number of people in the United States that were really looking at Trump as their salvation. You know, I thought they would read him the way I was reading him, and I missed it right now. And you see, when you're in a situation where things aren't going in the way you feel good, and so many people want to change that reality. You can't change uh, another person's reality. You can only work on your own reality. And um, in this situation, something I was writing to a friend this morning, I put at the end of my letter, uh, death is the only retirement. Until then, I'm busy. Because I, I think Gail and I have both been um, talking about it recently that this is what we're going to do for the rest of our lives until we don't exist anymore on this planet. Because there's no other option. There's nothing else to do but to work on raising consciousness. And this is how this applies to this election. You see... There was someone I was talking to, actually this morning as well. We were calling people, giving them love, and supporting them in, in this transition. And she was talking about, wouldn't it be nice, we've got 59 people, 59 million people that voted for Hillary and 59 million that voted for Trump. Maybe we should have our own countries. Maybe we should separate. And I was going, no, that's not it. That's not how it works. And it reminded me of a movie that I saw back in 1982 with Jim Henson called The Dark Crystal. And what that movie was about were um, two different factions that were created when the crystal that literally um, ran this planet split. It was damaged. And um, a mystic... A uh, group of people was formed, and the evil counterpart, the Skeksis, were formed at the same time. And in the movie, the whole movement was toward bringing the crystal into wholeness by one of the main characters who found the char shard and wanted to bring it back to the crystal to make it whole. But in the end, as he made that crystal whole at the precise time when the light of the three suns came together in the sky, in this amazing triangle to shine on the crystal, the 
mystics, the good guys, and the Skeksis, the bad guys, had to totally merge and become one. And this was the completion of that movie of joining the two components rather than furthering separation. That was not the answer. You know, it's interesting. It was a child's movie, or so called, and it was something that had so much depth to it. I remember um, when we viewed it, it, it was very, very profound. What's interesting to me right now is that we've had quite a few conversations with you recently talking about unity, even working with one of our sacred geometry forms that's called the unity grid. And unity isn't something that just happens in and of itself. It is something that really enables us to see the separations that we have been functioning with. And how do we move from that place of separation or that, you know, that sense of dominance, um, arrogance, um, lack of compassion, inequality, all of those things have been quite a significant part of everyday life. And now as we approach our movement towards unity, it is an important thing for us to reflect deeply where we can come together, where we can look at those judgments and heal those judgments, heal those separations within ourselves and be able to reframe our positions and envision another future, another coherent field where we come together, where we honor the differences. And we do it in a way where we don't want to smash anyone else. We don't want to take away their livelihoods or their, you know, what enables them to live a full and dynamic life. Instead, it is a time of deeply looking into how do we position ourselves as empowered, amazing, loving, compassionate beings that can live together in a unified field, being cognizant of the good of the whole, the good of all, which includes each one of us. It is a whole new recognition, a whole new way of rebuilding, reframing what human life is on this planet. And the more we touch into this, the field of consciousness, that ability to recognize the higher aspects of our being, the true appreciation of love and compassion, the more these pieces will come together. It's not going to happen all at once. It's about being in the moment. Three years ago, we experienced a very, very profound flood that wiped out so much of our land and our services. And we could have looked at it in a way of, oh my God, we're devastated. Or what we ended up doing was connecting in, knowing that we are blessed, knowing that all is well, and being present in each and every moment, not knowing how and what to do, but just knowing that we would take one step and the next step, and we would do it in the way of being conscious and aware to the best of our abilities, being open to learn and to work together with others. And it led us into an incredible new paradigm and a new capability of prosperity and unity and strength that has really carried us forward in a very important way. I think those are aspects that are very much a part of where we are now and how to move forward together. Something that has really um, struck me deeply is the fact that we have 59 million people voting for and 59 million people voting on the opposite side within 238,000 votes of each other. And that's phenomenal that we are really such a, an evenly split country. 
And it's really important to understand how we have that counterpart out there, a reflection of ourselves, that we are both the light and the, the dark, however we look at it. The other side looks at us as dark, the other side, you know, it makes no difference. It's all shadow play because in the end, the reality out there is not what determines your reality in here. It's your reality in here that determines the reality out there. And this is what I mean to say about that on a deeper level. There have been incredible beings on this planet, beings like Jesus Christ, Muhammad, Krishna, and Buddha. All of these beings were coherent, focused beings. And what I mean by coherence is their connection to the higher realms, their connection to the truth, their connection to that energy that is within all of us was so profound that they were able to hold sway over millions of other individuals. That is, if you were to put them on a balance beam, and you were to put Jesus on this end of the balance beam, his energy, his focus, his love, his presence would outweigh the presence of millions of beings on the other side. They would be drawn toward that light, toward that consciousness. And that's what is being offered to each of us now in this wake-up call. I said my bubble was burst. I didn't realize I was hiding out. And now I see my task, my opportunity is to put my consciousness into good expression. That is to get out in the world and make a difference however I am drawn, however I am inspired to take that inspiration, which really that word inspiration means to be moved by God, to be moved by that energy, that source within us to a place where we apply ourselves in our lives to making a difference to adding more love, to adding more consciousness. You see, the systems keep falling back into the lowest common denominator, the lowest aspect of consciousness. So what we need to do, each one of us, is to work on our level of consciousness, to bring it to a, a higher refinement. That's what will make the systems change. That's what will make the systems work. That's what will take us on our balance beam, and each one of us has a counterpart on the other end of that balance beam, a human being that has children, that has relatives, that has needs, that has a hurt that they thought could be solved by voting for this person. And we're all voting for something that we think will help our lives. And yet in the end, the only thing that really helps our lives is consciousness. And that's what we have a choice in tapping into right now. So that each one of us just has one other person to send out love to, to send out consciousness to. And if we can expand that into something that's even more profound into tens, hundreds, you know, we don't know. Just the love carries the energy. We live in amazing transformative times. That's the blessing that we've chosen. We are here because, you know, there's a part, an aspect, a huge aspect of our souls that chose to be a part of this transformation. So we ask each and every one of you to go take that moment, that breath, that reflective time, go within, find your source, Find your tribe, find your sense of love, connection to the earth, connection to source, connection to each other. And let's take one step after another and allow this experience to keep growing into something that is so phenomenal, so awesome, that strikes a whole new chord for humanity and the earth 
and all that is, we are those who have chosen to do that. It's a very important time now. Let's activate that core being, that beautiful sense of who each, each and every one of us is, and come together and build that unity. Allow the separation to fall away and show us the magnificence of what unity truly is. You know, this is all a play, and it comes down to each one of us deciding how we're going to react and how we're going to be in this play and to choose the highest form that we can each moment, each interaction, each aspect of love that we can express and share in our lives, that's what makes a difference. It makes a difference for us, and it makes a very, very profound difference in the world. Because that love, that coherence, that consciousness keeps multiplying, keeps growing. And the anger, the hurt, the sadness, the fear, the guilt, that stops growth. That puts us into a small part of ourselves and it puts everyone around us into separation. So it's time to come together in a bigger way. Find those, find the moments, find the vision, find the excitement in your life that you can dedicate yourself to right now to make a difference. And together we're going to walk into the higher energies that are flooding this world and just needling us into making change, <laughs> into growth. Whether we know it or not, like it or not, this is an opportunity to grow and to love more. Thank you. Thank you. Our deepest blessings and love.